Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we'll be making a diffuser panel in Blender using the geometry nodes. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. So a skyline diffuser is an acoustic treatment you may have seen before. It's a random looking grid of wooden blocks that bounce sound around in different directions to help with making spaces a little less echoey. Now, they're not actually random. A true quadratic residue diffuser is based off very specific mathematics using prime numbers. And we could model a true to life version, but we can make one with geometry nodes using random heights that'll suit our purpose and look good enough. So to start off, we're going to make our base block. Unlike every other tutorial you've ever seen, we're actually going to use the default cube. We'll go ahead and shrink the default cube down to 5 centimeters on each side. And then jumping into front view, we're going to go ahead and move the vertices up so that the origin of the block is at the bottom. This will make it so when we scale our cube later, it only scales upwards and not also downwards. Let's go ahead and apply the scale of this object. And just for looks, I'm going to go ahead and add a bevel. I'll set the amount to 2 millimeters and give it two segments. To save time later, let's go ahead and add a wood texture to this object. Now if you don't already have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I would highly suggest you do that. It makes adding simple materials a whole lot easier. I'll go over that real quick in case you haven't seen it. Go up to your Edit menu and go to Preferences. Go to Add-ons, and in the search bar, type Node, and you'll see Node Wrangler. Just make sure the box is checked. Getting back to our object, Click on the shading workspace. Click on the principal BSDF and hit Control Shift T. Now you'll want to navigate to a folder where you've downloaded some PBR textures. I would highly recommend cc0textures.com. They have a whole host of textures that are available with the Creative Commons Zero license so you can use them in your projects. I think I like this one. For this particular project, I'm going to go ahead and download the 2K PNG version. Now I've gone ahead and put that in my assets folder that I keep. So navigating to that folder, I'll select all the images there and hit Principled Texture Setup. This will attach all four images into my material using each one for its own purpose. Now let's create our grid. Going back into top view, I'm going to go ahead and add a mesh grid. Before I change anything, I'm going to come down to this window and change some settings. Since our blocks are 5 centimeters and the standard grid is 10 by 10, that would give us a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter grid. Now because of the way the blocks will be set on that grid, we'll set the size to 50 centimeters, but change the X and Y subdivisions to 11. Now each of the points are 5 centimeters apart. Let's go ahead and add our geometry nodes set up to the grid. I'm just going to reuse this timeline viewport and set it to Geometry Node Editor. With my grid selected, I'll add a new Geometry Node tree. First, we're going to add a Point Instance node to the tree. And we'll set the object to our cube. Right off the bat, we have our grid of cubes. Next, we need to randomize the heights of our cubes. There's a ton of ways we could go about doing this, but this method makes a lot of sense to me. You might find a better version that works for you, but I hope this at least gives you a starting point. We're going to add an attribute randomize node to our tree. And we're going to set the attribute name to height. Because there's no default attribute called height, this will create an attribute in our tree. The attribute will be of type float 
and we need to set a minimum and a maximum value for that random generation. We're gonna go ahead and set the minimum to one and the maximum to five. Now we don't want our blocks to be any values between one and five. We want them to be at one, two, three, four, or five. So what we need to do is we need to round off our attribute. To do that, we can add an attribute math node. We'll set the operation to round. Our A value will be the height attribute. And the result will be placed right back into the height attribute. So now we will have values of 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, not 1.2 or 4.8 or something like that. Next, we're gonna take this height value and construct a vector that we can use to scale our objects. To do that, we're gonna add an attribute combine XYZ node. This node, this node lets you take any combination of floats or attributes and combine them into a new vector. Since we wanna leave the scale of our cubes on the X and Y planes the same, we're just going to leave those both as floats and set them to 1. So every vector this produces will have an x and y value of 1. We just want the z to be randomized. So you may have guessed already that we're going to set the z to attribute and then use the height attribute that we've created. The question is, what do we put as the result here? We could replace the height float value with a new vector attribute. We could do that, but we don't want to. Instead, we're going to go ahead and stick this result right in the scale attribute. Immediately, you can see that this has scaled up our cubes just on the z-axis and left the x and y axes alone. Now, because our blocks were 5 centimeters cubed and our maximum z scale is 5, that means the tallest blocks are now 25 centimeters tall. That might be a bit taller than you want them to be. So what we're going to want to do is add a way to scale this whole thing down on the Z. We can do that by adding another attribute math node between the rounding and our vector. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this attribute math node and stick it right here. I'm going to change the type to multiply and set the B value to a float. So it's going to take the height attribute, multiply it by some b value, and then stick its result back into height. So if I change b to 1, it puts it back to where it was. But if I lessen b, it shrinks everything. However, it's still going to everything's still going to be five distinct steps. They're just going to all be shrunk down by the same factor. At this point, the blocks are pretty much ready. I do think it would be nice to add a little frame around the whole thing. Now that we've got a frame put together, we can go ahead and tweak our height until we get the overall effect we're looking for. Now finally, if you take a closer look at your materials, you'll see that all of your blocks have the exact same position of your material. And this doesn't really look good just because the repeating pattern is really easy to notice. So we're gonna do two quick tweaks to our material to make this look a lot nicer. So going over to our shading tab, we're gonna add an object info node. So it's under input, object info. One of the options in object info is random. This is a random number per object. And what's nice is when you instance objects using geometry nodes, each one of those instances will get its own random number. Let's go ahead and take that random number and stick it into the location of our texture mapping node. What this does is it shoves around the overall position of our material. So a lot of that duplication is already starting to disappear. If you're not getting enough variation here, you can play with this by adding a math node and setting it to multiply. 
This value will then move things around quite a bit. Depending on the look you're going for, you may also want to plug it into the rotation. But that's really up to you. Finally, I want to add some color variation as well. So let's go ahead and add a mix RGB node to this base color section of our texture. So under color, I'll add a mix RGB node and I'm gonna plug that same random value into color two. This will create a grayscale value of one to zero going into that color two, which we can then use to alter the color of our texture. Play around with the different layer modes here till you get the effect you're looking for. I like what Color Burn does here, so this is what I'm going to stick with. So here's the final result that I came up with. Here's a scene that I've put a couple of these into so that you can get an idea of the final result in context. I hope this video has been helpful, it gives you some ideas of some things you could do with geometry nodes and with Blender. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you next time.